So now that uh, we've covered the basics of how it is that we plot cast shadows in perspective, I'm going to show you how to apply that te technique to other shapes. Here we have a rectangular prism and uh, we follow the steps again. This is the top of this line is my light source vanishing point and the bottom is my shadow vanishing point. So again we use the shadow vanishing point as our ground plane pivot point and we sweep it across the object till it finds the uh, corner of the object that is touching the ground. Now we see that as I pull it in close to the object it hits the top corner first but that is not correct. You want to sweep it until it hits the bottom corner because remember the shadow vanishing point corresponds with the contact points on the ground. So it's going to hit, it needs to, it needs to have a line drawn out from the place where the object will hit the ground, okay? So that line comes from this point down here where it hits the ground and you would then draw um, a dark line coming off of that point, corner point and a vertical line going up the length of it to the top edge. Use your ruler to line up the light source with the top edge to find where the uh, the line of the light source hits the line of the shadow vanishing point and we find that it's going to be a tiny little dot right around here. And this is behind the object but um, as you'll, s you'll see in a minute why it's important to establish the shape of the shadow in the areas that you can't see. So again repeat the process. Line through the ground the edge on the ground, vertical line up from that edge to the top edge, um, line through the light source through the top edge to the to where it falls on the ground and put a dot there. Repeating again through this corner here, oops, vertical line up from there to the top, line through the light source, through the top edge, to the ground. It falls right there. And then one more corner out over here. Pivot point, the shadow vanishing point to where it touches here. Extend it all the way out. Vertical line up from that edge to the top edge. Line from the light source through that edge to where it falls on the light source ground ground line and that's the point right there. So in this case we have uh, four four points. So there's our shadow, shadow vanishing point line which then connects with the uh, the uh, intersection of the light source and the shadow vanishing point line and we connect the rest of the dots and that helps us establish the shape of the shadow. Um, if I just sort of uh, shade that shadow in so you can see what the shadow shape actually is, you'll have a better understanding of uh, of of what it of, what the, of the shape that it takes on. So the part that we can see is basically going to be shaded and shaped like like so. And as we can see that it was it was important to establish um, where this pivot point was, where this vanishing or sorry, where this intersection was in the back so that we could understand how uh, how far back this shadow goes. And we find that it doesn't quite come to the edge of the object, so it sits a little bit further back from the edge of the object. So let me now apply this uh, same method to a very different shaped object. Um, but one that's very common, cylinder. You run into a lot of cylinders. I started this one already. Um, again, first step, line from your shadow vanishing point to where it hits the object. It hits the object right here at this corner. So you draw a line, continue that line along from that edge, from that corner edge outwards. And then you draw a vertical line up from that to the top edge. Okay, so even though this doesn't have any um, hard edges to it, you still apply the same ideas. So it hits the, or the edge of the cylinder here, and then you draw a vertical line up to the top edge, and then you draw a line from the light source through that top edge just to find where you will put your dot on the ground. 
the next thing, um, let's do the other side. Let's come in from the other side. Um, t again, pivoting to find where it hits the edge of the object. Bam, seems to hit it right about, right about here. A vertical line up tells us where the top of the edge is. And a line through the light source and through that vertical line will tell us where to place our dot on the ground right there. And then we extend this line out like that, right? Okay. So now, um, instead of hitting a back corner edge, what we're going to do is extend the line out from the vanishing point again and just find the point that's furthest away from the shadow vanishing point on the ground. So I'm just sweeping this edge, this um, ruler line over this to find the furthest point. It seems to be that this is the farthest point from my shadow vanishing point right here. So I take a vertical line up to there and I find that it hits the top edge um, of this object right about there. So then, um, oops, I forgot to extend this all the way through. Um, so then line from light source through the top edge down to the ground plane establishes this as the point furthest away from the light source. So um, we're not going to connect the dots here with a straight line because this is a cylinder. So you can just kind of roughly, uh, you know, draw a roundish shape connecting those dots to give yourself a nice cylinder shape. And then, of course, shade in, and this will tell you basically the uh, shape of your shadow for a cylinder, which is going to be nice and round. Um, establishing those points, those points to connect on the ground, just helps you establish the length of the cylinder shadow shape and the the sh the actual shape of that shadow shape. So it depends on the light source, and as you'll see when you draw and practice, um, it depends on the placement on the ground plane as well. So I think we have time for maybe one more um, object here. I'm going to do a cone. Um, same principles apply, exact same principles. So again, here is our shadow vanishing point. Line out from that to where it hits the object. Hits the object here. Now the thing about the cone is that we cannot draw a vertical up through the cone because this, uh, this the cone sh angles inward and so I would not be touching the object if I drew a vertical line up from there. Um, so the top edge is the same thing as the bottom edge. So in this case these two points meet right here. So all we do is we draw a dot, put our dot right there, okay? Because th there is no vertical that extends beyond that, right? And this line on the other side comes in and seems to touch the cone right about there. So that I would put a dot right about there. Okay. Now there is one other uh, contact point we can establish, and that is um, we need to find where the top point of the cone falls on the ground. Okay. So if we want to find where this top point of the cone falls on the ground, we can just take our steps in reverse. Do the same thing we've always done. Um, if we want to find this top point, uh, we draw a vertical down to the ground to see where it falls on the ground. It happens to be the middle of the cone. So take a line out through the shadow vanishing point through the middle of the cone. Extend it all the way out. Okay. And um, and then, of course, same as usual, draw your vertical up to the top of the edge and align from the light source through that top edge to find where it hits the ground. Seems to hit it off our page a little bit, which is okay. We're going to have a dot off the page. That's all right. So then uh, we connect up our dots. We have a dot here. We have a dot that we know to be about right over there. And we have this dot here, and we connect it with that one. So the shape of the shadow for this cone will be something along these lines.